We've got one AI here that makes fantastic looking images. We've got some instructions here about how to get this kind of result. I'm going to ignore that and we're going to get another AI to create a prompt and we'll see what kind of designs we get. I'm going to be going for style impressionist, late 19th century, a woman in a garden and one to one aspect ratio. We'll run this real time and see how long it takes. So it took about 12 seconds and it's looking good. We've got the Renaissance woman. We've got the nice hat. It's kind of, uh, it's supposed to be impressionist style. So it's not really taken that uh, on board. So another image here looking fantastic. Now, if you've used Stable Diffusion, this will all be very familiar to you. We've got the prompt, we've got aspect ratio, which is cool. Let's try 16 by nine and let's go ahead and run that. Now I'm running this on their website and the, the way it looks is very similar to Stable Diffusion. And it's not that surprising because the developers of this actually helped with latent diffusion, which evolved into Stable Diffusion. And they also worked on Stable Diffusion. So some of the developers here were previously working with Stable Diffusion. And here we have our Renaissance woman in a garden. It is looking pretty awesome. Now the subject here is pretty, pretty detailed. I haven't actually read it, but uh, we'll try a different prompt. We're going to try a cyberpunk uh, dystopian future and oh, an Android assassin. And this ability to create 16 by nine it's really nice because if you're making a thumbnail for YouTube, for instance, you could choose that. If you need something for a one to one like Instagram, you can choose that and you can go 916. I think that works well on some of the other uh, platforms out there. So here is another one of our cyberpunk assassin. You can see the sword. You can see the cyberpunk theme. You can see the rain and the kind of cyberpunk colors in the background. Now this is a model called a flux and this is one of the more powerful ones. It's called uh, dev and uh, it runs beautifully. It really creates amazing looking images. And uh, from what we can tell it's actually better than stable diffusion three. I'll show you the numbers in a little while. And this is the next prompt. We've got photorealistic modern day cityscape at sunset. This is looking amazing. I mean, the aesthetics of it is just, just it's, it's pretty wonderful. Here we have a flapper girl from the 1920s. They do the kind of roaring 20s dancing, dancing the Charleston in a crowded smoke filled nightclub. Uh, it's looking good. Every, the, the fingers are looking good and the bracelets. Yeah, yeah, they kind of match. The dress is looking awesome. The jewelry, another one from the 1920s. It looks good. It looks good. The main character looks fantastic. I like the way it, it renders the, uh, the main character. Now with this one, you have the option to change the output format. This is something that's missing on quite a lot of, uh, you can't really do this in Dali 3, another image of the 1920s. With this one, I think that well, once again, we've got the electric guitars there, which are a little bit out of place. The main character looks fantastic and you've got this photographic feel to it. The period is kind of mixed. The quality is so much more photorealistic than you would get with uh, Dali 3. We've got here a human humanoid alien. So it's capable of doing things that are complete fantasy and it's capable of producing very high quality images that I would say are better quality than stable diffusion three better quality than better quality than playground. And I would say also more photorealistic than uh, Dali three as well. Here we've got another one with a slightly more scary alien. Let's try it with a one to one format. Uh, one to one aspect ratio. Now I asked the other AI to mix up the style. So you can see here, we've got the castle background, the kind of ancient castle, and we've got the somewhat scary looking alien now. And the quality is just top. It's 100% the best quality that I've seen from any AI that does imagery. We've got something a little bit more frightening here. And this is what I like. It's got the ability to use its imagination and it creates, uh, I don't know, fairly realistic looking 
uh, scenes. So here it's supposed to be a dark, foreboding era. The style is horror and it's a tall, towering human humanoid alien. Uh, it's pretty cool, I really like that. It's supposed to be close to an asylum. Now, I can't see the asylum, but it's followed the prompt pretty precisely. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. Uh, and it looks similar to the previous image, even though the aspect ratio has changed. Everything does seem to be somewhat in proportion. Another alien uh, construction, this time very detailed instructions. Uh, a face that's a mesh of wires and circuitry. You can see it's kind of followed the prompt. Another one of the same theme, very similar styling. Here, this is retro futuristic and it, the period is supposed to be the 1950s and we've got a 1950s chrome looking alien. Now, I felt those images were a little bit static, so I asked the other AI to put in a little bit of motion. And here we've got the thing running. It's, it's supposed to be its long legs striding across the ground with terrifying speed and agility. And we've, <laughs> we've got it running there. What I like about this one is the amount of detail that you can see. You can see real detail uh, along the hand and also along the uh, the thigh. Now, I really like this image here. It didn't come come out exactly as the prompt suggested. You, you, you're supposed to have the, the, the creature, it's riding, being the winged creature. But the wings seem to be on the alien. But this would be a, a usable image. The fingers look fine. The gun looks fine. The, the animal looks fine. And it hasn't followed the prompt exactly. But that's a really good image. A floating island. I mean, look at that. That looks fantastic. Uh, there's a little bit of a signature in the in, in the corner, and that really is the only problem with this image. It's nearly perfect. A picture or a painting, an impressionist painting of a woman lying in the grass. The feet is a little bit. The feet are a little bit awkward, but for the most part, it looks fine. Maybe one, two, three, four. Maybe just the right amount of fingers, guys. This one is perfect. We've got the woman in an impressionist painting lying on the grass, everything looks fantastic. Now I've gone for something photorealistic, uh, sun in the background, it looks beautiful. This is absolutely fantastic. This is the kind of thing that we hoped uh, that Stable Diffusion 3 was actually gonna be. Photorealistic, romantic, beautiful woman sitting on a grassy hillside. So this is the powerful Flux. So this is the powerful Flux Dev Edition. So you can see image after image, absolutely looks fantastic. Now that was all running on the Flux Dev model. We're now running on the Flux uh, Schnell model. This is a very German theme going on in the in the naming. And you can see the results of this model, which is somewhat faster and 1.3 seconds. Look at the time. Look at the time. 1.3 seconds. Ah. <laughs> This one looks fantastic. The quality differences, you can say they're almost, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the, the other one produces better overall aesthetics, but th these are usable images. Let's try again. I mean, 1.3 seconds. What? Again, another perfectly usable image. So almost all the images that I created were usable. This means that if you're running it locally, which you can do, you can run this guy locally and you can also run the dev one locally. This guy here, has got an Apache license, so that's open source. The other one has got a non-commercial license, so that's more for your research. Let's see. It, it, this is fantastic, by the way. I, I have to say that. <laughs> this is really good. Um, and uh, let's see how it all works. You've got this website here where everything is found. There are lots of instructions. You can run it on their hardware, and it's going to be a very reasonable pricing, similar or better than, I haven't actually looked at the detail, uh, comparable at least to Stable Diffusion 3 in Stable Assistant. These are the models here. We've got the F Flux Pro, Flux, Sch Sch <laughs> Flux uh, Schnell and uh, the Flux Dev. Now, if I'm correct, I think this is their first model and you can see the Pro one is going to be the very best one uh, according to the ELO score. We've got the Dev, which is up here. And we've got the one, the Schnell, which is up here as well. So only Ideogram and SD Ultra, SD3 Ultra can actually outperform the Schnell one. That was the one that was running so fast. Uh, this is amazing stuff. Um, we can see SD3 Medium. The one we've got is down here. So. Ooh, let's see how to download all of these and to you can run them inside a comfy UI. That's going to be a different video.
So this is a uh, hugging face. You can see we've got the Flux uh, one dev. This guy here should be able to run this inside a Comfy UI, 23.8 gigabytes. And if you are wondering about how that's gonna work inside a Comfy UI, I've already done a video on the RTX 4060 Ti. I'll have a link to the video which shows you the implications of running this on a smaller uh, GPU, something like the 16 gig gigabyte uh, GPUs. Uh, to really get power out of this, you would need something like, uh, something bigger than the RTX, the, uh, RTX 4090. So you're looking at the professional cards and I will have a link to a video where we discuss those professional cards. I think Apple as well have got enough memory to be able to run this. So I'll link to some Apple uh, resources if you are looking to upgrade, but you should be able to run this on a 16 gig, probably a 12 gigabyte uh, card as well. 